Ah, the orange tip. The bright neon flag that screams to everyone, my government doesn't think I'm responsible enough not to go grocery shopping with my airsoft gun. In the UK, 60% of the entire gun has to be orange, blue, or neon green. Neon green! What's going on guys, Vincent here, bringing you another Toronto Airsoft video from the land that has many things, but no orange tips. That's right, in Canada, an orange tip is not required. The guns that we have with orange tips were originally meant for the US market. But there are regulations involved. I admit, it's not the most entertaining topic, but you should be familiar with the laws if you're serious about the sport. When you're browsing our website, you might be wondering what the difference is between US versions and Asia versions. Well, US versions come with a side of fries and a Diet Coke, whereas Asia versions come with a pair of chopsticks and a fortune cookie. I'm just kidding. Or am I? The key difference is the US version comes with the orange tip, whereas the Asia version has a black tip and the European two-pin charger. Even if you get an adapter for that European charger, it's not meant for our 110 volt circuits and is meant for 220 volt input. Bear in mind that both types of chargers are not the best quality and could overcharge and damage your battery. It's always best to stick with a smart charger. According to the laws set by the RCMP, in court, an airsoft gun can be considered a real firearm and you can be charged as if you had been using a real gun. Not to mention, press to make a split second decision, police will shoot first and ask questions later. And trust me, they don't chrono their guns. Always keep an airsoft gun in a gun case if you're outside of your house or an airsoft field. You would think that this goes without saying, but all the time we get people coming into the store and the airsoft field with a naked gun. No, I am not talking about that great movie with Leslie Nielsen, rest in peace you comedy legend. If you do decide to bring a gun without a gun case, it's pretty much the fastest way of getting banned from the store, the airsoft field, and the airsoft community in general. And yes, I might publicly shame you. So what are the laws governing what the CBSA will allow through the Canadian border? Again, referring to the laws set by the RCMP, a replica resembling with near precision a real firearm is considered a prohibited device and cannot be imported. However, if it can fire a projectile weighing 0.2 grams at 366 feet per second or 1.25 joules of kinetic energy, it's considered an air gun and can be imported. To make sure that we adhere to those laws, we import guns with extended inner barrels or stiffer springs. Before you go out searching for powerful airsoft guns to import, do consider that if the CBSA does decide to test your gun, it could take weeks or even up to a year to test. And if for whatever reason it doesn't hit that magic number, it's considered surrendered to the crown. A fancy way of saying incinerated and never seen from again. Yes, it's true, Canadian prices cannot compete with US pricing, but retailers like us go through the paperwork and the licenses so you don't have to. Not to mention, every year we're a little bit closer to US pricing. And when I started Airsoft, a basic starter AEG was about 600 bucks. Finally, I want to discuss field regulations. Every field has their own stated velocity limit according to their insurance policy, and usually this requires that you downgrade your spring. Now this can be seen as an inconvenience, and I definitely get that, but I'd rather take that inconvenience over an orange tip any day. And there you have it, a primer on Canadian airsoft law. Airsoft in Canada is better now than it has ever been. Please be responsible and don't be that person that ruins airsoft for the rest of us. All it takes is that one incident and the laws change and the sport dies along with it. As always, thanks for watching, subscribe for more content, and we'll catch you next time.